Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Mati Allah Ati Rasulullah Al Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajeezu, Da'eefu, Miskeen, Zal, Al Mujahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that the blessed month of Ramadan is a month of ibadah and worshipness. Alhamdulillah as it happens the programs are longer in the month of Ram Ramadan and all the zikrs going on and the best form of worshipness for this time of month is these mawlids, the zikrs, these associations. So alhamdulillah there's no better place to be than in these majlis and these associations. We pray that Allah always give us filled with the dhikr of Allah filled with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah that we, we covered a lot of subjects. And so before we go on and keep going into different things, do people have any questions from the, the talks that we've had and the associations that have taken place? That to, to know ourself is to know our Lord and our whole way is based on knowing ourself. <coughs> that people who don't know themselves, they distance themselves from knowing their Lord. Means that, how can we know Rabbi al Ala? The Lord Most High Allah <coughs> supremacy, His signs and majestic realities when we don't know ourself. And that's why Prophet came and says, who knows himself will know his Lord and the reverse is so true that who doesn't know himself doesn't know his Lord although they may think they know their Lord. That's the whole secret of the tariqah. Is that everybody thinking they know Allah they know all about the Islam, they know all about the realities, they, they know what they need to know. And Prophet came and gave us something very easy that who knows himself will know his Lord. And if the person is not taking a path in which to know himself which is right in front of him or her, how they could know anything else? So then the whole reality of tariqah is in just this one hadith. So as we said many times, one hadith is enough for somebody to reach their reality. If you plan that you think you have to memorize a thousand but you don't implement just one, then what, what the, the cassette recorder or the recording device serves a better purpose than that. Our life was to take the holy hadith, implement it within our life and reach to its realities and unlock the treasures that Allah has placed within our, our heart and our being. So then when we take just to know myself, I have to really know myself. If I don't know myself, I fall into every trigger that shaitan is sending. Because before you can know Rabbi and Allah, we have to come back down to the level of earth and say, what is shaitan playing with you at every moment? Shaitan is like the cat, you are the mouse. And every minute he's sticking his paws, if you ever watched the, the, the cat with a mouse, he doesn't eat it right away. He actually takes great pleasure in tormenting the mouse. He just poke it around and he's fascinated how the mouse think it's going to run away and then with his nail again he grabs it and throws it and move it around. And shaitan is doing the same thing with us, <coughs> excuse me, Auzubillah, <coughs> that continuously playing with us, <coughs> making us to fall into his satanic trap. So tariqah is the small. It's not the large where you think, I'm going to master the large realities to, to reach to Allah 
It's the fine understanding of myself and where shaitan is playing with me. What are the triggers that shaitan uses each time to make me fall? And if I'm not passing that, there's, there's no real accomplishment in my journey to the Lord of Power. Although the illusion may be there, I may have many illusions in my world of khayrat and imagination. So that's why many awliyaullah have writings on imaginal world. You can imagine anything, you can imagine your closeness, you can imagine your grace, you can imagine tajallis coming to you, you can imagine uh, visions that coming into your heart, uh, shaitan can send those. But the, the proof is in the khuluq. When Allah wants to stamp the reality for Sayyidina Muhammad for us to understand wa khuluq al that Allah used the immense reality of Holy Qur'an and sealed it for all of existence, for all of time that, Ya Khuluq al Azim, you are of a magnificent character. That's not something small, it's so large it can't even be understood. But as a result of that reality it's the seal of Allah's eternal love and acceptance and gift and bounty that your khuluq is of a, of a magnificent character. That whatever we put you with your khuluq is the proof of who you are. Not your talks, not your vision, not, not your thinking of who you are but the khuluq is the proof of the pudding. So in our lives we're not even a dust under the feet of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad but we should be inheriting that teaching and that understanding. What sets us apart from everything else is the school of adab and khuluq of character. That what is my character? And that's why Prophet described, you have to know yourself. You have to spend your life in contemplation. As soon as you're about to get angry, you have to know your triggers. Because is shaitan again putting his nail into you for something to come? You're just going to always be a mouse in his trap? Then you're not the servant of Allah you're a mouse in shaitan's playing field. He stick his nail into you, you screaming and yelling. He stick his nail into you, you you're getting angry. He stick his nail into you, you, you lose your faith and you're upset about everything. Every, every, every prick he hits your character is coming out. I want to quit everything, I want to stop everything, I'm angry about everything. Whatever people's character, everyone has to go back to look at their characters and understand what is it that shaitan's doing. So in the month of Ramadan in which the, the, the energies are, are so powerful is a time in which to make itikaf. The whole of Ramadan is a time in which the servant should be looking at themselves and getting to know themselves. What is my trigger? Why am I getting angry? Why is my character happening on this issue? And it doesn't have to be anger, why am I getting excited? Why do I have uh, not appropriate desires? Why do I like this? Why is it like this? Whatever the spectrum of bad characters are, we have to understand and identify, no this is a bad character and why is it happening? What, what is shaitan doing that brings this character out? Only then the patient can identify the sickness and they see how shaitan's playing with them. Many people they want to look at inappropriate things and Ramadan they don't even stop in Ramadan. Think that not is halal for you, want to get angry, it's not appropriate to be angry, want to doubt everything. That why is like this? It is the way exactly Allah wants it. On the days you have faith you understand it, on the days that shaitan played with you you're doubting everything. Why does… why do people's characters want to make a drama, want to make a, 
and excess, make all the things that we can imagine if you don't know ourselves. And we don't spend a life and enrich our up, I don't want this to make me angry again. I don't want this trigger that shaitan plays. It don't matter what and who is bringing it, behind that is shaitan. Making the different characters in this play of our life to come and excite something, uh, bring something that's not appropriate and then we begin to react upon it. And the turuqs, their purpose was to bring this understanding, teach them, teach them on how to identify how shaitan is playing with them. And that when that comes and that emotion comes how to quickly attack it. I'm not to be angry now, I'm not to make a drama out of this, I'm not to have doubt in my faith. Because as soon as you react on it, you became the murid of shaitan at that time. And your path to Allah just became a lot longer, a lot more difficult because there's no growth. But when the servant is wuquf and wuquf aqal vigilant on themselves, like their, their, their heart is asking for the diamonds from heaven and they view themselves like a, something that shaitan is going to come to rob their faith. So they're every night vigilant, as soon as something's about to happen they're going to, to their area, they wash, they make their wudu, they pray their two rakahs and they begin to make their ta tafakkur, their contemplation, they make their salawats and they ask Prophet to send the fires, send the light, take anger away, take this character away, take this issue away until they can clearly see what's happening. And every time that issue comes they know exactly how to try to defend against it, they make their salawats in it, they don't fall prey into it and say, now they start to play the whole game of the yelling, screaming, shouting, doubting, all the different things. Because then now at that time you're just the shaitan is like a cat and he's just throwing you around and, and having such a good time. But then imagine the view in, in front of awliyaullah that uh, you're supposed to be rijal, you're supposed to be in training with these shaykhs to be of uh, adulthood, a maturity. And they're all watching and say, what's this that you're doing? You don't see shaitan is playing with you, getting you angry, getting you emotional, getting you to lose your faith, getting you to, to, to doubt everything, getting you to, to do everything that is uh, haram and forbidden. So the, that holy hadith is enough for our whole existence of tariqah to reach towards our marifah. That I have to get to know myself, what is it that's doing, why do I get angry, why do I have this and the whole spectrum. I can't even mention all of the, the bad characteristics and ruinous traits. And as soon as they come and those, those that are very profound in our life that continuously happen, continuously happen over and over and over. It's a form of retardation, not for the poor people whom their brain is actually in difficulty and a sickness, it becomes like a mental problem. And we said before that when they want to free the people from mental hospital, they put them through a test. They, they, they put a, a flowing water, we give this example many times, there's a room, there's a sink. The doctor comes and clogs the sink and turns the tap on, the water overflowing and then the floor is filled with water and there's mop and they invite one by one, say, are you ready to graduate? And each one come, yes, yes I'm ready, I'm, I'm graduate now. He walks into the room and sees the wet floor and begin to mopping, 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 thinking it's obvious. I take a mop and I just keep mopping around the water from this side to the water to that side, the water to this side. Doctor said, okay, 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 you go back in, you're not ready yet. And one by one the patient keep doing the same thing until the one whom Allah inspired to have an aql and understanding in their practices comes into the room and says, I've done this many times. And I understand this mopping is not going to go anywhere because there's a problem of this water flowing. If I don't stop the problem, what's the mopping going to do? Because their, their vigilance 
their muraqaba, their salawat, their awrats and all the tools that Allah has given to them is a ni'mah. Imagine all the poor souls that Allah didn't guide with these tools and they don't know how to deal with any of life's difficulties and they struggle through them. So an immense blessing is Allah send you to the scientists and the science of this reality where they teach, stop it, your room of insanity, your room of anger, your room of depression, your, your room of drama, your room of, of inappropriate desires, whatever your room is and you're just playing around with your mop, you're not doing anything. And its reality is you have to identify the source of that problem. And the one whom is ready to graduate immediately walks in, says, I've done this too many times. Goes over to the sink, unplugs it so that the water will go down and it won't come onto the floor. Then what he has left of a difficulty on the floor, he has to spend his life in cleaning that. So it means then one is we identify the problem, what's causing this problem? I have to unclog it and stop it. Every time shaitan is bringing that issue, is not going to let me to react to that. And then I spend my life cleaning, doing my zikr, doing my salawah, doing my, my meditation, my, my contemplation. Meditation not only just sit there and woo and go deep into woo but sit and wonder what you did for that day, why did you get mad again? When you ask to connect with the shaykhs, ask that I want to, to be in your presence, I want to feel your light and feel your energy. We said before, how are you going to see Prophet and you can't see your shaykh? And the shaykh that you, you don't even see the shaykh that you took bayad with, you have no idea when, who he is and, and what vision you have of that shaykh. And the shaykh that you're seeing every day in, in your teachings and, and in his class and his… The, the shaykh you took bayad with is like the principal of the university. And the shaykh that you're sitting in his madrasa and, and learning and learning and learning, you can't see him with your heart. Not delusional, and also when we came here we went to this place, we went to… No, no, the shaykh is just there, your fires dress me, fill me with that light that fill me with that inspiration, tell me the things that I'm doing wrong and my bad characteristics. Let me to understand through my consciousness of what I'm doing wrong because he'll never tell you what you're doing wrong. He'll make jokes and different things and talk because they can never give anything directly to anyone, nobody's capable of carrying that. But through the tafakkur they will, through the tafakkur they will begin to communicate with you, why is like that? And then they'll point out your issue, not anyone else's because they're not concerned about anyone's grave but yours. When you ask and you're trying to identify, what I did that night wrong, just a few minutes of making your hisab. Ya Rabbi before I sleep I sit after my salat, Isha salaam what did I do wrong? And asking for madad of my shaykh, what did I wrong and, and this issue that bothered me, what role did I play in it? And ask their fires to come. And they're not going to say, oh that guy was a bad guy and he bothered you. But what was your role in everything you did wrong because you're only worried about your grave and your character. Whatever that person did, did I respond in an appropriate way that Allah would be happy with me? Then you may be inspired, no, maybe you should have just stayed quiet, maybe you should have just walked away from everything, maybe you should have given everything to Allah to handle instead of trying to take your own right. And many inspirations will come to the servant to keep their hisam every night. So they don't have to go deep meditation, they don't have to look to see the universes, just look to see themselves. Am I doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing? Am I making my connection? Am I feeling all the things that I'm doing wrong? Am I giving the support that I'm supposed to be supporting with? You know everything is proportionate, the one who has nothing. And he gives five dollars, that's his entire existence. Imagine the reward that Allah gives to a servant when they have nothing and what they contribute and support and do is proportionate to who they are and what they have. It's just simple mathematics. 
Allah give based on who that person is. When they do and they support and they give, that's the time of tafakkur. And the one who has everything and give little like a, like a chocolate chip, Allah said, really? That's about the chocolate chip you're going to get of support because your belief is that much. And you're showing Allah you have no belief. You're showing Allah I don't really care if you're going to send me anything or not. I'm just doing this for the, the fun of it. Means everything about our existence is real. Everything of our existence and this hisab is of an immense important. Because when I'm sitting and being honest with myself and asking for the connection, asking for the madad, the inspirations begin to come. And if you can listen to those that are hardest, that you know, you shouldn't have done like that. You shouldn't have given like that, you shouldn't have expressed yourself like that. They would tell us in our training, pick up the paper, walk on the street when you're listening to yourself and you see something and you say, and you listen to your angelic inspiration say, pick it up, you stop and pick it up. You think, what was the significance? For you the significance was maybe nothing but it could have been everything for Allah We said, that how awliya got their trust? Oh because they sat with the shaykh and he gave them secrets of Surah Yaseen? No, Imam Ghazali gave it on Mawlid, he, he was writing with his pen and the ink, the fly came to drink from the ink. He said, for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad your creation of Allah and I'm a creation of Allah let you drink first. He waited until the fly finished, finished and then he put his ink and started to write again. And Allah said, what you did was dearest to me of all your actions, not all your khutbahs, not all your sobats, not all your majlises and thousands would come. Their associations of, of these shuyuk, they're, they're attended by thousands of people. And Allah said, this was dearest to me, the, the action that nobody saw but you listened to your heart. So the tariqah is based on this whole reality. Do you stop doing all your crazy things and that always being angry, always being doubtful, every time going into the same emotions, same characteristics or you say, no the insanity has to stop, Ya Rabbi I have to stop it. Then they say, okay great now identify the problem so as soon as it comes you target it. Write it and post it everywhere. I become crazy at this time of the month, I have emotions like this, I feel angry about this, I feel… So that shaitan doesn't fool you into falling into it, you know this is, oh this is my character, this one speaks I get angry. So you wrote it so that you don't fall into that trigger and then, Ya Rabbi let me too conquer it. <clears throat> make my salawats, make my connection, make all my practices. Give what has to clean me of my bad characteristics. <clears throat> if I'm overwhelmed with these bad characteristics, they have to be taken away. They have to be taken away with immense support. When people are asking, this is a sign like a medical office. When people are asking, oh I don't know which shaykh to listen to, I want to listen to all these shaykhs. You said before, then you must not be contributing. Because anyone who's contributing and contributing with all their force in a direction, they never have that question because they're deeply involved, they're enrolled, they're paying their tuition, they're, they're locked into the course, they're locked into the reality. There's no tuition but they've surrendered their life in that way, they don't have that question. I gave my whole life to my shaykh, everything, anyone who knows our story we give everything and on top of that everything more. You can't just go next day to somebody else say, okay, I'm going to give you now everything again, I don't have anything. So your whole life that is your lock, their teaching is, is an immense reality. We live the life of service then be, be of service. Lock yourself into it, be committed to it, be ashamed in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that you didn't do it because they're all watching, all watching. Again, you didn't do anything? Your day and night is for what? For yourself? 
So then this is the tariqah, this is the month in which to contemplate that. The Ya Rabbi most of all my character and when I begin to improve my character to be of service that I give myself to your Divinely Presence. Didn't uh, the mother of uh, Siddha Maryam said, I devote my child to your, 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 your majlis, your temple. Means people would, would give themselves, their awlad, their children in the way of Allah to be wholly devoted. We don't need our parents to do it, we have to do it, Ya Rabbi give myself to you, make me to have good character, the best of example that my hands to be in service to you, my, my mouth and my heart to be in service to you, my feet to be in service to you so that your ridan satisfied with me and that you purify and, and correct my khuluq and that you are happy at that time to make my service to be in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad so that Prophet has, a, has ambassadors that have the best of character, the best of example. We pray that Allah inspire us towards this goodness and the dress of all these realities and all these teachings of what can be accomplished and what can be achieved upon the soul. But the simplest is just sitting seven, seven minutes at the end of the night and asking, what did I do wrong? And I take a hisab and inventory and accounting of myself on, on what am I doing and why am I falling always into the same traps and that too stop those inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata ma yatifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.